everyone, welcome to another video and it's a slight change of pace today because I want to talk about the one big criticism about my racing that I get more than any other. Now I'd like to get a discussion going on it and I'd also like to explain my thought process about why I do what I do when I do when I'm out on track. So what's the criticism? Well the wording may change but it all relates to the same area of my driving. Why did you let that guy pass? Why didn't you defend more? You're too soft. You need to toughen up a bit. Now these are the criticisms I receive on a weekly basis so today I'm going to answer them. I'm going to explain why yes sometimes I do let drivers overtake me. Let's get to it. Now if you start looking through my back catalogue of race videos it probably won't take you very long to find an example of me leaving a bit of space to let someone overtake me and I'm not talking about blue flag situations I mean passes for position during a race so why would I willingly give up a position I hear you ask well here are four reasons why I do it now I'm a casual sim racer and my track time is usually limited to a one hour session a couple of times a week. When you watch one of my videos you'll know that there's been no lengthy practice to prepare for the big race. I have to squeeze everything into that one hour. Practice, qualifying and race. At most I'll get 20 minutes before qualifying to get a few laps in and familiarise myself with the combo. Now this lack of practice means that I'm not always 100% confident in the car, particularly in the early stages of a race and also when it comes to alternative braking points on defensive lines. Sometimes there's a much higher risk of me making a mistake if I'm under pressure from a car behind, certainly in the early stages when I have cold tyres and cold brakes to contend with too. If this is the case and I'm not feeling confident I will let the driver behind pass. It means I'm much less likely to crash and I'm more likely to be faster by the end of the race. It's far easier to learn when you're chasing someone rather than being chased and trying to defend. Now I'm also a sim racing butterfly. I flutter between sims and I mix up my races and the limited track time I do have I like my racing to be as varied as possible. So as well as a lack of practice I don't have any cars or sims that I particularly specialise in. This contributes to the lack of confidence that I sometimes experience. Now I know there's a simple solution. Choose one series and practice more. Well believe me I've tried that and to be honest the lack of variety bored me rigid. If I'm only sim racing for one or two hours a week I want that time to be spent having fun. When my confidence and familiarity with a car does increase then of course I'm willing to defend my position. In Assetto Corsa Competizione recently I've done a few GT3 races in the BMW and I've gained a decent amount of experience. I feel more comfortable in covering lines and trying to hold people off. This recent outing at Brands Hatch being a prime example. Now when you watch one of my races it's important to remember this is often my one and only chance to finish. I don't have the luxury of trying again in one hour's time if it all goes wrong. So for me it's all about risk versus reward. It's my one race of the week in this sim. I want all my time to be spent out on track not in the pits waiting for repairs. If I feel the risk of a crash is greatly increasing by me trying to hold off a driver behind then yes I'll feel it's the safer option to let them pass. But I know this is frustrating for a lot of you watching but my main aim here is to make the most of my one hour sim racing window and finish the race. Many sim racers will enter the same race three or four times in one day. For them it's worth taking a few more risks because they'll get plenty more chances later in the day. For me it's not worth the risk. This race is my one shot to finish. Now sometimes I'll assess the driver behind and simply hold my hands up. They're just faster than I am. Maybe it's a higher rated driver who's decided not to qualify and has started from the back of the grid. Maybe it's one of the front runners who has spun out and is now charging back through the field. There's very little for me to gain by defending against a faster driver unless of course it's on the final couple of laps. You'll slow them down, you'll slow yourself down. At worst you'll risk making them impatient and trying a reckless lunge or just crash yourself by trying too hard. Watch this clip from the fantastic Labrocca sim racing on screen now. The guy ahead of Ben was defending so hard he ended up making a mistake which not only cost him the one position he was trying to hold on to but several more as well. It's all about picking and choosing your battles wisely. I'll assess the ability of the driver behind and decide whether it's in my best interests to let them pass. After all I'm much more likely to put in 
better lap times and catch cars ahead if I'm chasing a faster driver rather than defending. Using a faster car as a target is a great way to improve your chances of a good finish. So hopefully that helps to explain why I'm sometimes not quite as assertive in my defending as I could be. One thing I do want to make clear though, this isn't a how-to video. It's not intended to be a guide for what you should or shouldn't do in a race. This is purely an explanation of my own thought process when racing. Why I make the decisions I make based on my situation and what I want to get out of sim racing. And another important thing to add, please don't stop offering me constructive criticism. It's all of the comments from you guys that have helped me improve as much as I have done with the limited track time I get. Seriously, reading your comments is the single most important thing to me on this channel. Way more important than views, sub counts, watch times, or any of that stuff connected with YouTube. So keep them coming. I really do appreciate each and every one of them. And I'll look forward to hearing from you again when I get back out on track this week. Until then, if you're interested in hearing more about my thoughts on being a sim racing butterfly, check out the video on screen now. Thank you all for listening to me waffle on, and I'll see you again on the grid very soon.